Um, Thank you, Drew. I thought it was I thought it was the first of the Jurassic Park sequels that really feels like a Jurassic Park movie all the way through. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so much of this is reacting to these creatures and the, these animals as characters. And yeah. I love the fact that you guys have made the raptors more characters in this. Yeah. Can you talk about, just for you, playing those scenes and trying to develop a rapport with something that's not there? Because yeah. that's the whole thing. You have to connect. Yeah. That was, I think that was the huge challenge. And I think going into this movie, it was like, it wasn't dissimilar to Guardians of the Galaxy in that it was like, okay, if we want this movie to work, we have to buy the emotional relationship between man and computer animated character. Right. And even more so in this because it wasn't a character that talks. Yeah, no dialogue. What, you know, no. there was no dialogue. It was, but it was like an intimate connection and relationship, almost like a man and his dog or like, you know, a man and a horse. It was it's something like that. And so we knew that if we wanted, if this movie was going to work and not be like a laughable moment, there had to be like, you had to actually, feel, if you could make somebody feel something by exploring a relationship between a man and a dinosaur, that we could, it could work. And, it's, and, and the thing is, it seems like it could be potentially laughable in the wrong hands. I'm talking about like Colin had this vision and I think it works, man, I think it works. And, and, and here's the reason it works, is because the mythology of the dinosaur in this franchise is that they're hyper intelligent. You know, they're, they're not dissimilar to a dolphin right. or like, you know, a, an orca whale or something like that. Well, I like that because I've read several drafts over the years. Like there's the infamous John Sayles, William Monaghan draft where I feel like this idea was introduced for the first time. Yeah. And it, I think it was something Spielberg was very, very set on and mm -hmm. really loved the notion of. So yeah. seeing you guys pull it off, this must have been for him like a real kick. Have you spoken to him since he's seen it? To, to Steven? Steven Spielberg? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, I think it was interesting because uh, one thing... That's a boss you want to impress. It's a boss you want to impress. <laughs> but he. But it was interesting because he, he, he and I both talked about this, and, and it's kind of cool. Is, and uh, he talked about Guardian... He, he, not to bring it back to Guardians of the Galaxy again, but, but he, he had seen that movie, and he said that he really loved it. He really thought it was a great movie. He saw it twice or something, so I was like, wow, that's really cool. And, and I said, you know, man, when I first saw it, I didn't know how people were going to react. I wasn't so sure. And he said, oh, that's how it always is. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be able to watch one of your movies. And it dawned on me, like, he's never actually sat down and watched a Steven Spielberg movie the way that we have. It's like a gift that we yeah. get to open on Christmas. Like, what is this going to be? By the time he watches it, and by the time, you know, he watches Jurassic World, or by the time I watch Jurassic World, I'm not going to be able to just sit back and watch it. You know, yeah. it's, it's like you're so part of the the collaborative process that, you know, you're just seeing that the version that you happen to lock down, but they're, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. So we did talk about it. I think he was, I think he was very happy with the, with the end product, but again, he, he, me, Colin, Bryce, we're not going to ever be able to sit down and watch this movie with any objectivity. One of the uh, things that is most iconic about Jurassic Park is the John Williams theme. Yes. Is there any particular piece of film music, whether it's a song or a film score, that really resonates for you or that was important to you? Man, um, the whole the whole score for How to Train Your Dragon mm. is really, really powerful and emotional. Um, and then I think anything like anything symphonic, I really think Big Symphony is so moving like I you know Star Wars obviously you know apparently the first time the actors saw the movie was without the music and they thought it was like cheesy they're like oh my god what is this it was like before <laughs> the effects and the music kicked in and then they sat down and boom, 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 like that whole music came came on and it's like it takes you on a journey I think uh and in that way John Williams with with Jurassic Park and uh it's the same thing it's just so iconic